So currently I'm on the south side of Chicago. There's about an hour until the estate sale starts and I am number three on the list. This could be a good one. All right, it's about that time. Tommy? He's not here. Not here? Ben? Yep. So I decided to come to this particular estate sale today because there was one item in the photos that has been on my thrifting bucket list for years. Okay, right. we're taking all the things. Okay, perfect. I'm looking for the virtual boy. It is in this basket here. Great. And here it is, the Virtual Boy, one of Nintendo's more obscure consoles. It was priced at $100, which is fantastic. And as you can see here, there were a number of games alongside it, which were priced between 10 and 30 bucks. And while these games are great, wait till you see what I picked up later in this sale. Great, can I just leave this up here with you? Yeah, definitely. Cool, thank you. Uh -huh. Tell me one uh, This is the Jack closet I was looking for. Just got the Marlboro. Saw a sleeve in here. That one, take that. Little socks jacket right there. That's sick. Now, you're probably wondering why I made my way down to this jacket closet when there were a ton of monster toys sitting on that table. Well, in the pictures for the sale, I thought I spotted what could be a potential Big E Levi's Type 3 jacket, which if you didn't know, could be worth a few grand. Unfortunately though, it didn't turn out to be the case. So from there, I decided to go back upstairs and join my friends looking through all of the monster memorabilia. So figures, large, small, okay. <laughs> Crypt Keeper, that's sick. I gotta get these. I'm gonna keep these. I'll go ahead and grab. You know, oh, yeah. I'm good. Did you get it? Yeah, I got my what I came for, so I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy all around now. I was like, I ain't going there. Anything that's like monsters related, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously. Now, as you're seeing here, I was going pretty fast through this stuff. I was basically just grabbing anything that was carded or still in the blister pack. So if you want to see more of what I actually grabbed, stay tuned until the end of this video. That's what I like, baby monster. Yeah. What, you got that pile? Okay, I'll just make yeah. sure what I'm going to grab from you. You already priced those. I'm just slowly okay. uh, doing it so that way. Oh, no, Wolfman? Where is he from? Oh, right. Yeah, I just am putting him back in the bin. 91. Okay, so I, I think I'll grab Wolfie okay. and okay, Frankie yeah. here. Right, Look at those. 1991. Those are sick. Where'd you put? Oh, okay. Can I just drop my bag back there too? Because I'm filling up. <laughs> there we go. Great. Thank you. And there's the Beatles. Cool little Alice in Wonderland bell buckle. Okay. Oh. Grab all these bell buckles. There's another bin of toys over here. Too much. Too much. So much to look at. Yeah, we could do too much. Burrito blueprints. Oh, I always go for him. Creature of the Black Lagoon. I think, is he missing his arm? Yep. But he broke that one. Yeah, it looks like some of these are damaged. Yeah. Missing arms. These all might be damaged. Yeah, these are the beat up ones. That's what it looks like. Uh, that's the moon from McDonald's. Now I did end up going through this bin pretty thoroughly and ended up picking up some really cool stuff. I got a bunch of like Tales from the Crypt Keeper figures and other monster figures like Dracula, Wolfman, stuff like that, as well as a bunch of other memorabilia that either I hadn't seen before or it was just too cool to where I couldn't leave it because all the stuff in this bin ended up being pretty cheap. I don't know who she is. I don't know who that is, let me know. Weird tales. Oh, oh yeah, so. yeah. But I'm looking at the Yeah, I'm good.
Now here you'll see me looking through some stuff that I don't deal with often. There was a bunch of these binders full of different card sets. There were some horror cards, when Mars attacks, some other really cool stuff, as well as a bunch of different magazines and comic books. Now like I said, this is not exactly in my wheelhouse, but I do know that some old horror comic books can do really, really well, and these were like 10 and 12 center, so I did end up buying a stack of these and a few card binders. Pretty much got everything, but we keep touching. Don't I know, we? right? Would you throw 15 on him? Okay. Would you do 15 on him? Yes, cool. Great. I'll do that too. Okay. And following those pickups, I decided to go up to the bedrooms, go through the closets, and see if there was anything else up there that would catch my eye. Unfortunately, I wasn't the first one to go through the clothing, but I still did find a few things up here. <laughs> No, I didn't see much. The rest is just cool little Levi's vest. That's pretty cool. Grab that. Oh, look at this. Got the big old Millennium Falcon. Oh, he's cool there. Look at him. That is a cool bank. <laughs> I'm going to grab him. He's too cool to leave. It's like almost like Donkey Kong, but it's not. Speaking of Donkey Kong, look at that poster. That's Super Smash Brothers from Nintendo Power. Not an expensive one, still cool to see though. It's kind of cool, look at them. They're a bunch of little mini books. Bicycle Elastic. That's fun, I'm gonna grab those. Got some horror DVDs down in here. I'm gonna go scan these real quick. Now after scanning through some of these, I did grab a few to send into Amazon. However, while I was doing this, I was talking to a couple of other guys that mentions that there were more Virtual Boy games sitting up by the checkout, and I must have walked right by these because they mentioned that they were priced up pretty high, and one of the games that they mentioned was up there is the holy grail of the Virtual Boy, Jack Bros. Yeah, they got the heavy hitters. Those are two heavy hitters I don't have for my collection. Yeah. <laughs> They're really cool. I've never yeah. I've never seen those before. We come across a lot of things, but never so that. The Virtual Boy is known as yeah. the uh, Nintendo's greatest failure. But I, I think well, when I started looking into it, I was like, that would unfortunately make sense. But it is really, it's yeah. still really cool. Like, the but that's, that's the game to find for yeah. it, so. What would you, what on the replica ring? Uh, the, sorry, the, uh, that's a good question. Sorry, there's a sheet up there. Do you know what I'm at right now? Uh, you are currently at $614 without the ring. Gotcha. Well, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. add the ring, yeah. <laughs> Now at this point, I am extremely interested in these two games, not to resell, but for my own personal collection. And honestly, the prices aren't too bad. $500 for Jack Bros. I was thinking, I think they're worth around $600 for cart only, and this one has the manual. And then Waterworld was right on about where I thought it should be at $260. However, as you're probably thinking, dropping that much money on two video games is a lot of money. It's it's a big deal to make this kind of purchase, so I had to kind of maul it over in my head for a little bit. And after thinking things over, this is what was kind of going through my head. I was thinking, I'm already spending like 600 and some odd dollars here. Uh, a few other people have walked by this game and not been interested, even though they're buying some stuff. And I've dealt with this company quite a bit in the past, so I bet they would be willing to negotiate on this price for me if I decided to buy both of these cartridges. So that's what I decided to do. I went back down front and tried to negotiate. Is there any wiggle room on this? Um, I could, this one I could do 400. Okay. Um, this one's 260. I think, because that one's about right on yeah. what it should be worth. This one is, I mean, it's yeah. pretty decently priced. Yeah, um. What am I at? I'm at like six something, right? Yeah, um, this one I could do for 175. Would that be more in your realm of numbers? That would be more, yes. I'm at six. You're at, so you would be, huh, if we did 400, and 175, and then you're at 635. <laughs> so 12. Is there any way we can get that down to 1100? Sure. Yeah? yeah? Cool. Then I'll do that. Okay. Cool. I'll grab this. Okay. <laughs> That's such a big buy, yeah, but yeah. That's awesome. Those are going straight to my collection. Thank you. I ended up grabbing them, yeah, because yeah. I was like, I, I'm never going to see it again in the wild. I'm, I'm just going to grab it for my collection and 
Bite the bullet. <laughs> right. I was gonna get it right now. Oh, but sorry, brother. No, you're good, man. Yep. See ya. Have a good day, bud. So there you have it, as you just heard by combining those two items with the rest of the stuff that I was already buying, we came to a deal and I couldn't be happier, I'm adding two of the rarest Virtual Boy games to my collection on top of all of the other Virtual Boy stuff that I bought earlier in the sale. I. I was beside myself, I was smiling, I was just a very happy camper at this point in the day. And after that purchase, I was pretty much done. I did do another like pass or so around the house, dug through some more stuff to see if there's anything else I wanted to add on, and I did find a few more items, including this amazing 1988 Lord of the Rings chess set that looked like it had been hand carved. You didn't see the board for this, did you? No, when you, I think it actually is here somewhere. Um, I'll, I swear I'll, that I I'll saw I'll take a look it. around. Oh, if I can wait, find is it, that the board it. there, do you think? Or is that not the right Where? one? Like, see so you strip looking. by the window? Oh, yeah. maybe. maybe. I'll check I it. <laughs> Unfortunately, that board didn't end up matching the set that I grabbed. But after this and after my final little lap around the house, I decided to go ahead and settle up and put this sail to bed. What a crazy, crazy morning. <sighs> okay. I just drove home and I just want to take a second to really appreciate exactly what just happened at that estate sale. I ended up going to that estate sale in the hopes of buying the Virtual Boy, which was showcased in the photos. But I ended up walking out with not only the Virtual Boy, but the holy grail of that console, Jack Bros, as well as a couple other great games as well. And then on top of that, there was also all of this amazing, amazing toys, monster toys, horror toys, like look at that Gigapet, like that's probably worth something. Gigapets go for a lot of money. All of this amazing stuff from one sale. Like I am not even joking. I am kind of mind blown right now. I spent over a thousand dollars on this stuff and normally I don't do like haul segments of the videos anymore, but I think this one deserves it. So I will see you guys inside in just a second and I will go over some of the really cool stuff that I just picked up at this amazing estate sale. Okay, now I'm gonna take you guys through the stuff that I ended up getting at that amazing sale. Obviously there is a lot of it, so I'm not gonna take you through every individual item. It would take way too long. And I guess to start things out, we'll go ahead and just hop into some of the more like random items I just thought were pretty cool. And let's go ahead and start with this guy here in the front. This is a hand puppet by Edgar Allan Poe made by Creation Station. It's a pretty rare one from what I gather. The last one sold back in January for $68. And then right next to him, these are kind of fun. Look at these. These are like monster plates from 1991. We got like Dracula, the Mummy, Wolfman, and Frankie on there. There are two sets of the big ones, one set of the small ones, and then even some little party hats. I just thought those were too cool. I couldn't leave those behind. Then you probably saw this one in the video. It's a White Sox replica World Series ring. It says die on the side, MVP. I don't really know too much about it. I figured for eight bucks, I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. Then there was this Pro Lock Multi-Tool by Coleman. It's brand new, I figured I'd grab it. And then check this guy out, look at him. This is one of those old banks. It's shaped like a monkey. I thought it looked like Donkey Kong. I don't really know the date on it. If I had to guess, it's probably 1970s. Then I don't know if these were actually in the video or not, but it's a bunch of these small little miniature figures, if that'll focus. There we go, that's a little better. It's a bunch of these little miniature figures right here. They're dated 1992 on the bottom. You can see this one says bat form, so it's probably like Dracula's bat form based on the rest of this collection. But there's a quite a few of those, and some miniatures can go for some good money. And then this underneath, this I am really curious about. I haven't done any research on it, but it was only $10, but it's this Lord of the Rings chess set from 1988. And if we look down inside here, some of these figures, I mean, they look like they're hand carved. They are in great, great shape, and they are just a beautiful, beautiful set here. So I don't know anything about this. I'm definitely gonna have to do some research on it, but there are all of the figures down inside there, if you guys can see, definitely something I need to research. Then over here, right next to them, at the beginning of the sale, I picked up a bunch of these belt buckles. They're all like Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass stuff. So look, we got like the Mad Hatter tea party here, Alice going through the looking glass, got the Cheshire cat, the, uh, the caterpillar smoking a hookah on top of a mushroom, the white rabbits right here. Then there were two other ones. This one, I'm not really sure what the scene is. If anybody knows down below, let me know. And then the last one here, we got the Beatles. It's a 1992 belt buckle and it's licensed by Apple. I only ended up pulling out these three of the DVDs because most of them are just cheapies that are just going to go to Amazon, but these three will sell on eBay. It looks like this set right here ends up selling for like 60 bucks for the three of those. 
And then finally, over here, the last thing on this table is a bunch of the books and comics. We got a bunch of these little mini books. And then, like I said, I picked up a stack of comics here, as you can see. I don't know much about comics. It's definitely something I'm going to have to learn. But off the top of my head, I have no idea if I did good on these or not. Those were definitely one of those impulse buys, one of those things where you see and you just buy because the price is right. Now let's look at the few pieces of clothing that I did end up getting. The first thing here was this starter socks jacket. It's a satin one, so that's going to be great. Then next we got the jacket that I was hoping was going to be a huge score. I was hoping this was going to be a Levi's Big E Type 3 jacket. In the pictures, that's all I could see was like one sleeve and then a little bit of this pocket here. It looks like it could be a Levi's. Unfortunately, it's not. It's actually unbranded, so kind of a disappointment there. I should have stayed and got some of those more monster toys that were on the table, but hey, if that would have been a Levi's, it would have been an insane score. And then finally, the third piece that I ended up picking up is actually a Levi's <laughs> denim vest right here. It's not too old. It's probably 1990s. Nothing huge there, but it's still a solid piece. And now let's hop into the monster stuff. This is just some of it. I do have some like doubles of a lot of these items here. So I just pulled out what I could fit on the table here. But I want to start with these guys right here in the front. So these right here are monster Giga Pets. You can see two of these are brand new in the box. And I have two loose ones right here. This one's actually a Buffy one. It's kind of cool. But I was super, super happy to find these because if you follow my channel, you know that Giga Pets and Tamagotchis can go for some crazy money and these are no exception. I found comps for loose ones like these two for over 160 bucks all the way up to like $200. And then these two were actually brand new and I couldn't find comps for brand new ones, but there was like one listed. It was like, it was listed for something crazy. I'll pop the comp up over here, but that's just insane. Four Tamagotchi or Giga Pets, I couldn't be happier. Those are absolutely awesome. Now let's just start moving around the table. The next thing over here is a Wolfman replica medallion. I didn't know anything about it. It was just new in the blister pack, so obviously I grabbed it. Then we got this whole bag full of action figures. They're all horror figures, monsters from like uh, Tales from the Crypt Keeper, Frankenstein, Dracula, stuff like that. I pulled out a few of the more interesting ones here. Um, I know these two are probably worth some decent money because I think I may have sold these guys before. And then I also wanted to point out the shrunken head. If you guys know, oh, there it is. The shrunken head. If you know anything about me, you know I love Goosebumps stuff. And this is the Goosebumps keychain, the shrunken head. So I will be keeping that one for sure. And then I actually might end up keeping these guys. These are just super cool shelf pieces here. Over here, we got the creature from the Black Lagoon. We got Frankenstein's monster. And we got the Wolfman. All of these were dated 1991 and they're just, they were just awesome. And speaking of awesome, look at these. These are vintage cups with the toppers from Pizza Hut back in the day. They are just too, too cool. Look at that, there's Frankie, there's the Wolfman, there's Dracula. And then some other items down here from another fast food chain. These are actually the Universal Monster figures from Burger King, which if you don't know, are one of the few like kids meals toys that actually hold their value relatively well. I think a complete set of four of these goes for around 50 bucks. Then below them, look at these things. These were just really interesting. They're little rubber heads. And if you look over here, they have little uh, suction cups on them. So you can stick them to like the window or your car or something like that, I guess. <laughs> just kind of, kind of unique and interesting. I had to grab them. Moving on up top here, we got two on-card Tales from the Crypt Keeper figures. I said in the video, I think these are definitely staying with me. I have nostalgia for this, so I am definitely holding on to these. They were 10 bucks a piece. I can't imagine they're probably worth much more than that, but they're just too, too freaking cool. I also picked up a lot of loose figures for these, so those loose figures will also be staying with me. Then moving down right here, we got a couple of watches that are brand new in the blister pack. We got the Mummy and Dracula, and I actually got like two or three more of each of these. And then finally, the last little monster pieces I wanted to share were these guys right here. They're little pencils with pencil toppers, and there's actually a big market out there for pencil topper collectors. And here we got the creature from the Black Lagoon, we got Wolfman, and we got Frankie. And while I absolutely love finding this kind of stuff, it's some of my favorite stuff to buy and sell, toys and action figures and stuff like that, the reason I went to the sale was for that amazing Virtual Boy lot. I got my hands on it. Let me show you exactly what all was included in that. And here it is, Nintendo's greatest failure, the Virtual Boy. As you can see, it came with the headset or the console itself. 
the setup stand as well as the controller. And actually, if we look over here, you can see there was this additional mount over here. So at some point they must have sent off for repair on this guy. You can see he's sitting a little bit wonky. He's kind of crooked off to the side. So I think they probably sent out for this extra mount to replace this one so that it can sit straight again. And obviously not only was there the console, there were also a bunch of different games that were priced between 10 and $30 a piece. So first up here, we've got Vertical Force. Then we've got Red Alarm. Mario Tennis, Tolero Boxer, Virtual League Baseball. I think this is the most common game for the Virtual Boy, Galactic Pinball. And then unfortunately, the last two games down here didn't have their manuals with them, but we got Panic Bomber as well as Wario Land, which is actually a pretty rare game itself but not as rare as these two right here. These are the two that I paid up for. I went back up front, they had them sitting separate and they were priced up, but we ended up coming to a deal, ended up getting Waterworld on the Virtual Boy, the second rarest game for this console. Absolutely stoked to see that. But then there was also the holy grail of the console, Jack Bros. This is the game that everybody wants. It's super rare. You can see the cartridge is in pretty good shape. It does have a sticker on the back. Nothing I can't clean up. And as well as the manual. And the manual is in perfect shape. No creases, no bends in that guy. I am stoked to be able to add these two to my collection. And not only add those two grails to my collection, but the console itself. I mean, after all, this is the reason I went to the sale. I've been wanting one of these for a long time. It's been on my thrifting bucket list. I've held off on buying one because I knew eventually I would come across one in the wild. And for a hundred bucks on the console, this was definitely such a great, great buy. And when I say I've been looking for one of these for a long time, I mean a long time. I've been collecting video games for a while now. It's how I got started in reselling. And this has always been on my list of things to find. I've just never come across one. So to finally add one to my collection, I am ecstatic. I'm glad that I got there early. I'm glad that I was like the second one in the door. What, what an amazing opportunity, not only to grab the virtual boy, but to finally add two holy grails to my collection as well. Anyways, though, that's going to wrap things up for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this amazing haul as much as I did. If you did, please go down low, smash that like button for me. And while you're down there, if you want to see more crazy garage sales and stuff throughout the summer, hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. For now, though, I'll catch you in the next one. Till next time, keep on treasure hunting. Peace.